All right, welcome back everybody. We're here with a, a student today who's um, one of my favorite students, we'll say. I say that every time we record these, but uh, would you like to introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about um, just how you found out about this campus? Sure. Um, my name's Lucas De Benedito. I'm a non-traditional student. Um, was actually a senior in IUS in a program called Informatics. Uh, which is where you combine data and computers and people and usually a focus of some sort. Um, in my case, it was psychology. And uh, so essentially, I had a, a minor in psychology. And you combine all those together and you find and create and strengthen the links between all those different topics. And so, um, it's kind of a sad story, um, how I found out about Purdue, but um, what, what happened was is that my, my, my father passed away uh, and my senior year at IUS, uh, and that was pretty tough. Um, um, so it made me rethink about what I was doing with my life. Uh, and I was driving past per Purdue Polytechnic in Albany campus every day and uh, I just had this feeling to stop in there um, and with my father he had a prosthetic leg um, just like one out of 150 people in the United States I think the current statistics are so it's, it's pretty high that people have prosthetic legs. Uh, that That's are, a higher number than I would have suspected. Yeah. Um, so um, thinking back um, about my father and how he struggled with that, um, so w what happened was is that he would take his leg off at night, um, just like everybody who has a prosthetic leg does, and he would forget to put it back on uh, when he would go up to get a glass of water or something. And so he'd end up falling on the ground um, and then, you know, usually hitting his head or, oh. um, you know, different things would happen. And so that was, that was pretty rough. And I just figured that that right there happens probably to a lot of people. Um, you know, and I, I can't help my dad anymore, but I could probably help other people, and I think we as humans can do better. So um, when I was studying uh, computer science, programming, and statistics, um, you know, I, I'm not necessarily going to be able to help people directly per se, but when I found out about Purdue, um, th they had a mechatronics program. And so I, I figured that, well, maybe we can incorporate robotics somehow into prosthetics, um, make it more accessible, not as expensive for people. Um, we could do something where you're monitoring people if they're laying in bed and whether using, say, infrared technology and some machine learning and actually determine if someone is tossing and turning in bed or is actually getting up and about to stand up and then flash and alert. So that would kind of address that issue with people getting up out of bed. And so um, that's when I found out about Purdue's mechatronics program, I figured that would be a good way for me to try to help those people. So that's why I chose Purdue. Yeah, that's. Well, thanks for sharing that yeah. personal story. We appreciate that. And um, I know from having you in class that you are also interested in um, organizations that use 3D printing and um, the ability to make things to help with uh, prosthetic limbs. And that, that's one of our taglines that we have here is you know, we are Purdue. Uh, what we make moves the world forward. And you know, from the classes that we've had together, that, that um, 
I really like to use this. We don't just have this knowledge just for the sake of it. We want to help people with it. And I think your your story is a great example of that, of how, you know, how we learn, by learning engineering and learning how to make things that we can actually make people's lives better. And yeah, absolutely. That's a, a direct example there. So um, so now that you've, you know, you, you found out about us, you were driving by, but decided to stop in and um, kind of told us, which degree the mechatronics degree appealed to you um what have you found once now that you're in these classes what have you found the case to be and what do you like here about the classes do you do you see the opportunity to get to make things and have hands-on experience or? so well, when it comes to purdue polytechnic i actually um, ended up switching from the me mechatronics program with the focus on robotics to mechanical uh, engineering technology uh, because i think having a better grasp of all the different materials uh, and how they can interplay with each other as well as the additive manufacturing or the 3D printing um, is probably more in route with what I'm trying to do. Um, so part of the reason why I like Purdue Polytechnic Albany is because I've seen different engineering programs like at the University of Louisville and then I found that having more hands-on approach, uh, so, so traditional engineering schools usually focus on theory uh, in the sense that it's very mathematics-based uh, and maybe a little bit of hands-on, um, whereas if you have a technician's program, that's definitely hands-on, not so much mathemat mathematics. Whereas Purdue Polytechnic to Albany, uh, is more of a focus on, on both of those things, You're like right in the middle. So you can act as an interface between the technicians and maybe the, the engineers with a highly sophisticated, really strong mathematics background. And so you, you understand where those engineers are coming from, but you also understand where the technicians are coming from, and you can be that bridge between the two. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that because we, we say that right, as part of our recruiting statement, but to, to actually hear a student say that, that's, uh, um, because they're both important, right, the theory-based and the, or the, the more mathematical approach and the hands-on approach, but a, a good combination of that, like you said, can help be the bridge to communicate between sort of, uh, and in companies, a lot of times those are two departments. So every so. week um, <laughs> I'm in that lab building something, and I really like the hands-on approach let's try this, does it work? No, let's change it. Why did it work? That's where the, the theory and the engineering uh, practice comes into play. That's why I really like that. Yeah, well, and I feel too that as far as learning techniques as an instructor, that if I tell you this won't work, you might get it, but if you try it and you spend hours failing, and you, see it, you try something that doesn't yeah. work, then you know, and, and then you know so much more when you try an approach that you know will work. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So, well, you mentioned some of your, the big picture goals of how you want to put this into practice. Um, what is next for you? Where, where are you at in your program here? And you know, how, how much more time until you finish? And then uh, what do you hope to do after you finish? So, uh, as I mentioned, I was a senior at IUS and I transferred over. And a lot of my classes and credits transferred as well. So, I was going to ask if that was an easy process because we yes. do get a lot of people that transfer and um, we want that to be easy, but um, but, but you felt like it So as a help. transfer student, it, then um, it, there's not everything transferred, sure, uh, but uh, so I'm a junior um, on my way to a senior um, credits wise, um, but as for, uh, I got maybe a year and a half left uh, and then I'm finish with my mechanical engineering technology degree. My plan is to, um, if Purdue West Lafayette main campus will have me, I would like to go for my master's degree program. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I was lucky enough to be a research assistant for uh, Professor Rustin Webster. Okay. Uh, and that, that was really beneficial, I think, Experience-wise, but also the, what I was working on was something called CAD conveyor, and it 
essentially is a program that helps teachers to grade CAD drawings faster. And so um, you upload all your student drawings and it compares it to a, a grading key and then it points out the differences in those files. And so um, he helped me to get published in that. And so that was, that was an amazing experience. So Yeah, and that's, I'm glad you mentioned that because we don't uh, see a lot of undergraduates get published in a peer-reviewed journal. So. That was, that was a whole lot of work. <laughs> it uh, is. It's huh? uh, totally worth it. Though. We're proud of you for that. So, um, Well, great. Now, is that master's in engineering technology or is it a master's in mechanical engineering technology? Or what, what was the specific program you're looking at at West Lafayette? So uh, my limited research uh, is that I'd like to really focus on biomedical engineering. Okay. And so... Yeah, we can build robots. Um, yes, uh, the struggle right now is the software to be able to make it a little bit more lifelike. And if we can improve people's lives doing that, that's great. But what if we have the ability to say, if someone loses a hand, potentially kind of regrow some of that? And you know that um, you know military is working on some of that right now um, from what I read in the newspapers and I, I think that would be really great for our veterans you know coming back from war that's that's pretty serious stuff and so um, I'd like to be able to maybe help in that one way or another so biomedical engineering I think is is the route to go in regenerative medicine okay yeah well I know I put you on the spot there and usually uh Students are just thinking about the, the end of the semester or their next set of midterms, but uh, I appreciate you kind of reaching out in the future there. It's fun to talk to somebody that has a more of a longer term vision too. Um, so It sounds very science fiction, but there's actually significant research from a little bit that I've read. Uh, it has something to do with um, your nails. Uh, there's the ability right. to, to incorporate that, um, but it, it seems very promising. So maybe one day, you know, we can grow in so we'll see how it goes cool well that's exciting so thank you very much for well, stopping by thank you we appreciate it we are proud of you here and we uh proud of all our students and we're just um you know look forward and i'll still you know we'll, we'll, teachers will still be here teaching but you all go out into the world and do very interesting things so i uh, look forward to see where you're at in five years please stay in touch i will definitely thank all you right, for yeah. everything you do <laughs> thank you